Okay, let's continue with uh, question number 11. Shan's initial endowment of oranges and apples uh, are 57. And Javi's initial endowment are uh, 58. Okay, so Shan uh, carries 5 oranges and 7 apples, while Javi uh, carries 5 oranges uh, and 8 apples. In total, five and five, ten origin, ten oranges, sorry, and seven and eight, fifteen apples. Shan's preferences are such that he always consumes half of his income on each good, while Javi is always ready to exchange two oranges for each apple, because he likes apples twice as much as oranges. Then the contract curve is okay. This is the case of Cobb Douglas and perfect substitutes. Okay, then as Shan um, likes to spend 50% of his income on good, uh, well, on, on oranges and the rest on apples, we will uh, write a Cobb Douglas type function with the same exponents. Okay, and um, Javi, well, as Javi likes twice apples, um, then we could write the the double of the coefficient in apples than in oranges. Yeah. So we look uh, for the contract curve by equalizing the MRS because the tangency condition holds. Okay. So MRS from uh, Shan is the derivative with respect to O is A divided by the derivative with respect to A that is O. Now, from Javi, the MRS is the derivative with respect to O is 1 divided by 2, that is the derivative with respect to A. So, if we isolate, for example, O, we have O for Shan equal to 2A for Shan. Then the correct one should be C. Okay, now 12. Um, Shan's initial endowment of oranges and apples, so it's the same exercise. Now the question is the price of each orange relative to each apple, or also called price ratio. Okay, so here P is, as I always write, the price of a uh, good X. Okay, then this is the reason why we can uh, do the exercise only with one variable for price okay we um, take apples as uh, the numerator and we uh, then give apples price one then price of orange divided by price of a will be uh, equal to the price of oranges and we call it p okay so we only have one variable is p um, and then as uh, Javi has a perfect substitute he will set the price okay and the price will be equal to it uh, his sorry his MRS the derivative with respect to oranges is one the derivative with respect to apples is two from the um, from the uh, utility function of Javi that was if you remember O plus 2A so 1 divided by 2 then that's the price uh, each orange then will cost half half of uh, an apple okay that makes sense chance initial endowment of oranges well all the same the one Russian equilibrium is well remind that uh, Javi uh, has perfect substitutes then uh, her oh, sorry his his um, demands will not be easy so we go to chance uh, preferences Cobb Douglas and then to his um, his uh, demands we know from the first exercise I make you uh, in January that uh, we have a beautiful formula uh, to find the demand from each uh, for each good okay so is a divided by a plus b okay in the case of 
Shan was one on one, so one divided by one plus one, then here's the uh, budget for Shan. Uh, Shan has five oranges, each one at price one half plus seven oranges, each, uh, seven apples, sorry, each one at price one, okay? Divided by the price of oranges is one half. If you do the calculations, Shan will demand 9.8 oranges. Apples, okay, one half, the exponent of apples divided by the sum, price of apples is one, and then here we have the budget of Shan is the same, of course, as when we calculate oranges demand. Now, if you do the calculations, uh, Shan will demand 4.75 apples, okay? This has a lot of sense because as the price of oranges is the half, at the end, the half of this is this. So he spends the same amount of money in each good as the exercise asks. So uh, now mark the clinic conditions to find the demands for Javi because Javi has uh, not useful demands, okay? So the demand for oranges will be equal to or should be equal to the uh, supply of oranges. Uh, each one carries five oranges, so in total 10, if Shan uh, demands uh, 9.5 oranges, then the rest, 0.5, will be demanded by um, Javi. And as they carry 15 uh, apples, 15 minus 4.75, 10.25 units of apples will be demanded by uh, Javi. At the end, I think, I think if I'm not wrong, that uh, this was the answer, yeah? Okay, this is a typical um, exercise of uh, perfect substitute, perfect complements, okay? Now, Brian's initial endowment of films and music are these ones. And Andrea's initial endowment are these ones. So, uh, in total, uh, 20 films and 8 plus 7, 15 uh, music units, okay? Brian's preferences are such that he always consumes half of his income in each good. So, um, a Cobb Douglas type again, uh, X uh, or F, in this case, F times M. While Andrea always consumes one third of her income in films and the rest in music. So, here we have a Cobb Douglas, Cobb Douglas type uh, exercise, yeah? Very typical. Uh, we know that mathematically it's not, it's not, it's quite long, so uh, let's do it. Andrea always consumes one third in films, okay? Then the utility function for Andrea is one third in films, two thirds in music. If we multiply by three the exponents, we will have f times m squared, okay? And this is, um, well, easier to uh, manage with uh, the derivatives, okay? Now, DMRS. We equalize DMRS to find the, um, the, tangent, the tangency condition, sorry. Then, the derivative with respect to F for um, Brian, I think he was, is M divided by the derivative with respect to M is F, okay? Equal to uh, the derivative with respect to f is m squared divided by the derivative with respect to m with respect to m, sorry, is twice fm, twice fm. Then, if we, um, if we simplify here, we find this expression. And as we know, we can't leave uh, this curve like this because we here have um, four variables, okay? Then we go to market cleaning condition uh, and we isolate, for example, for example, um, let's see which, uh, I isolated um, the variables for Andrea, okay? I usually uh, leave um, the contract curve uh, with the variables of the uh, consumer that is at the at the southwest corner, okay? 
Well, the market cleaning conditions are these, okay? In total, 15 units of films, 20 units of music. So, um, well, I think it was 20 units of, of films, yeah? Yeah, 12 plus 8, sorry, 12 plus 8 are 20 units of films and 8 plus 7 are 15 of music, okay? Uh, okay, this is wrong, yeah, this is wrong. This is F uh, plus F 20, so here I, I did it correctly, maybe I know what uh, could it happen to me here. So uh, 20 minus F. And here 15 sorry sorry 15 then m plus m 15 so m for andrea 15 minus the music for uh, brian so we substitute we substitute f and m here okay we substitute here and we find this expression okay and now we just multiply here by two and we will find an expression that um would appear here okay um, this one this one 15 minus mb divided by 40 minus 2 fb okay then perfect now uh, Brian's initial endowment of firms and music are these ones okay now the price ratio okay the price of each film relative to each apple then uh, apple we take uh, it as the numerator as uh, the price one so the price ratio is p okay now uh, we write the demands for each uh, good from each uh, consumer so um, as they are Cobb Douglas type we use as usual our formulas okay uh, I hope you you remember them okay and then we go to the market cleaning condition for music okay it's easier always good y than good x as i explained during class so we operate here yeah we operate here music 15 now i'm um, music 15 yeah music 8 plus 7 i wanted to be sure okay that I did it okay I did it okay then 15 you operate it 6p be careful here and we at the end will find 19 divided by 34 okay a little bit more than the half then here this is a card one okay 16th now uh, for the same uh, consumers, find the well Russian equilibrium. As I tell you always, uh, once we write here the demand for each consumer, now when we find the price, we just have to substitute it here. So uh, we know that maybe it was too much work, too much work for the previous exercise finding F for both consumers, but now. It's very useful substituting there, substituting there uh, the price. Okay, so we just substitute 19 divided by uh, 34 there in the four demands, and we will find these numbers. Okay, you all uh, know how to do this. Uh, it's just doing uh, carefully uh, so that we. Uh, we don't uh, make any mistake okay question 17 in the pre exchange we study in general equilibrium in this unit 7 the consumer who has the utility function x plus y will usually consume positive quantities from both goods uh, goods yes this is correct this is correct we um, we usually see in exercises it's um, it's an exception when uh, um, when this type of consumer uh, consumes only one of the goods so uh, when the equilibrium is in the um, in the core in the border okay of the edge work box 
Well, uh, we don't uh, usually see the case um, perfect substitute against perfect substitute. There, there it, it usually happens that, but, well, we don't usually see it. Uh, maybe in, in another, another um, moment I will, I will show you uh, and I will um, put some video uh, with, uh, with that uh, um, case that is more complicated, much more complicated than the uh, cases we usually uh, see. So I will um, answer this A as true because, well, in our cases, uh, and I, that's why I said usually, okay, here. Um, then with usually, this, this is correct. Um, we'll set a price ratio of one unless the other consumer has perfect substitute preferences. Yes. Yes, we know that uh, the customer who has perfect substitute preferences will set the price, okay? The rate at which the goods are exchanged. Um, well, in this case, uh, as I told you, if the other uh, player is also a uh, perfect substitute player, uh, it's more complicated in this case. Uh, uh, strange things happen. Let's uh, leave it like that. Um, this consumer will usually consume only one of the goods. Uh, well, uh, no. Then A and B are uh, true. Okay, number 18. If consumer A's initial endowment for two goods X and Y is 412 and consumer B is 77, which of the following may be uh, one Russian equilibrium? Okay, uh, this question, I think it's mm, quite important. Uh, could it be A? Well, uh, in, a, in A, consumer A has uh, given 4 units of X, yeah, 4 units of X, and um, he has received 4 units of Y. Sorry, I was looking here, sorry, sorry, sorry. He has given one unit of X, sorry, now he has three, he had four, okay, and he has also given one unit of Y. That's impossible if they are good for him, okay? Then, uh, the same here. This is impossible, okay? If they are good, uh, I can't give from both goods because I will be worse. Um, C. Uh, here, consumer A uh, receives one good of X, yeah, from 4 to 5, and receives one good of Y also. This is impossible, okay? Uh, then the sh it should be D. It should be D. Receiving one unit of X for one unit of Y, and then consumer B uh, re uh, gives that unit of X to consumer A and receives the unit of Y that consumer A is uh, sacrificing, okay? So, if we look at the Edgewood box, um, B, C are here in this part where it can be traded, okay? We can't go from W to uh, the northeast and to the southwest, okay? That's not logical if they are goods. Uh, then D is correct, and A, uh, I didn't uh, plot here A because A doesn't verify, doesn't verify the uh, market clearing conditions, so we, there is not a point here, in fact. Um, if you look at, um, okay, here, uh, 4 plus 7, there are uh, 11 units of good X supplied, and uh, there are 3 plus 7, only 10 demanded, okay? There is an excess of supply of good X, so there's not a point there. If consumer A's initial endowment for two goods X and Y is 10, 8, and consumer B's is 5, uh, 8, 
and their initial demands are uh, the final demand, sorry, are 8, 9, and 7, 7, which of the following has been the price of x relative to y? Well, if we can see here, uh, consumer A initially had 10 units of x and at the end has 8 units of x. So he has sacrificed 2 units of x. Um, well, she, she, oh, sorry, he, <laughs> he receives 1 unit of y. Okay, so uh, for 1 unit of y, he receives 2, he gives 2 units of x, then the price of x is 1 half. Okay, there are 2 units of x exchange for each unit of y. So the price is one half. Okay, these are very uh, sorry. Is C okay? Is C P one half? These are quite interesting questions. Okay, you should think about them if you don't uh, see them clearly, and, uh, and even if well, if you if you can't uh, um, see them you can't understand them uh, I will be um, at the email to to answer you whatever question you have okay? then uh, question number 20 if two consumers have Cobb Douglas utility functions then uh, having one consumer or the unit of each good and the other one none of them always will be Pareto optimal well, that's true. That's true. Uh, because if I am in a corner yeah, and I uh, have nothing of both goods and the other player, the other consumer has all of the goods from both goods, of the unit of both goods, he will not give me uh, any good for nothing. Okay? Because I have nothing. If he has everything, I have nothing. So uh, he shouldn't give me uh, some good for nothing, okay? Uh, so a, it's uh, true. The contract curve will always go from one corner to the opposite one. Uh, yes. The well rush in equilibrium will always exist. Yes. Yes, because uh, the the tangency condition will verify and it will do it uh, inside the edge work box. So all of the above is uh, true. Okay, let's make a little break and we continue uh, from the f 21st question.